I've driven the vehicle several times behind me and as I've watched it evolve, I've definitely seen some nice enhancements that keeps improving every year. Hey, welcome to this edition of Road Warrior. I'm your host, Grant Robertson. Now behind me is the 2018 Hyundai Sonata. And what they've done for this year is not, well, resize the vehicle, but maybe just perfect it. And you can see that around the fine details. One area that may be hard pressed to find differences is really here from the profile. Now we'll get into the numbers in a second and they haven't changed from the previous year, but really they've continued on what we've loved with the Sonata, which is that nice silhouette, that mid-size regal looking sedan. Now some things to point out is the chrome accents. I kind of prefer more sporty models that subdue it, go with black accents here. You're going to see a little bit more bling really right around the windows. The door pillars are contrast with a really bright black accent, especially there on the mirror, but here on the handle, some more chrome. Now some other models we've seen previous years, they take the chrome on down. I like on this one that they're really sticking back to a body color look as we flare down. Now as for the rest of the midlines and all the other flares, pretty much dead ringer for 2017. While we're talking about things that really haven't changed, let's talk about the numbers because they continue from where they left off. Overall numbers, 191 inches overall length, 110 when it comes to the wheelbase, just over six feet wide and just under five feet tall. Now those are good numbers and really the overall length creeps it really into more of a bigger size feeling sedan. Nowhere near the skimping around some of the mid sizes feel like. Now what I also like is ground clearance. Now for any sedan, typically we're going to be low to the ground and you'll feel that one with the roof line and of course easing into this vehicle but sometimes we can at least carry it off the ground just a hair and they do that pretty well because this is about 5.3 inches anything over that five inches typically gives you decent ground clearance and at least a modest step in. One area they did spend a lot of time on is the good old grill warfare. The biggest change you're going to find for 2018 and where it starts is really right here front and center, the good old grill. Now the grill from the previous year wasn't bad, but what they did is, well, why not make it bigger? And you'll see these on other models, the Lexus and whatever. They have something similar, huge open face. So of course the competition has got to follow suit. So the grill this time goes all the way down before it was a little bit more raised. Now, of course, lower fascia, a lot of bling up here, especially around the edges, huge Hyundai emblem. Now, also you're gonna find LED intelligent light systems. Now you'll see a new design lamp system through here, really a lot of sparkle and jazz, but innovation. And where you'll see it is when you're going down the road. This simple turn of the steering wheel will sweep these headlights into the curb. Even better, of course, daytime running lights. Those are LED as well. And when night falls, this transi transitions into a full-fledged headlight assembly. What you also notice is accents down here at the bottom. Before, just a modest horizontal beam. Now it's kind of a more aggressive look that really sets off the front end. With any vehicle, you got to know the business end of things. You got to know, well, what can it deliver? with the people, specifically the amount of cargo space. But first thing I like is the hands-free approach back here. Basically stand near this vehicle and it's gonna know you're there and it knows that you want to gain access. And that pretty much activates as you get around here to the back side. And if you've heard, there's kind of a beeping noise to let you know, hey, this is about to pop open. It's about a three second kind of wait cycle. And that's helpful truly when you have a lot of things in your hand. And you've seen those on other Hyundai models, so nothing really new in this feature, but I like the fact that it's included here on this model. Now, another thing to talk about really is when uh, the vehicle's unlocked, that's not really gonna operate. So, well, how do you get in here? And what was interesting, having this vehicle for the length of time, about a week, it literally took me to the last hour to finally figure it out, bringing out the good old playbook known as the operator manual. And what I found is there's actually a hidden button right here. Actually looks like sheet metal. There's no actually definition to the button. You just have to know right above the H here, just press a little bit and it's gonna open right up. Very interesting because I like the fact that it's hidden, but there needs to be a little bit of education. So hopefully I helped you out. Now, while we've got it open, what you're gonna have is around about 16 cubic feet of space back here. Plenty of room in a typical sedan. So this is continued from last year, nice and cavernous, and we found plenty of room to put stuff in here. Lastly is operation for laying the seats down. That of course is gonna be right here. 
nice and easy versus having to stretch in there, go inside, simply pull here and you can extend this cargo even further. One last thing to talk about really is safety back here with any vehicle. Got plenty of backup view with all the mirrors and plenty of glass, but I love the fact that vehicles truly are coming with some safety built in. Backup sensors and these are really radar like, allowing you to know exactly where the things are in the, in the way as well as a backup camera. And I'm thinking this is gonna be standard across the board, that this is just a safety feature that vehicles can't overlook, and Sonata definitely delivered it. Overall, the Sonata is a modest sized vehicle, so you don't need a huge power plant under the hood, so that's exactly what Hyundai delivered, specifically a 2.4 liter inline four cylinder, delivers around about 185 horses and 178 foot pounds of torque. Now the engine is coupled with a six speed automatic transmission that does have kind of a manual like mode. But what I truly liked is the overall fuel efficiency, averaging somewhere in the low 20s to mid 30 range on our drive, getting us about 26 to 27 miles per gallon. When you start looking at those numbers and really feel like this vehicle's outside the midsize segment, really creeping into the bigger sedans, the inside, is where it confirms it. And where you see this really in the leg room numbers right off the start. Up front, around about 45 inches. In the back, 35. Now the 45 inches is really above board. On average, most of the vehicles getting 41, 42. So when you creep into the 45, that means almost any size vehicle, tall wise, can really get inside here. Now as for the average height, when you start to slide these seats forward, backseat legroom numbers are really gonna increase more close to about 38 inches. That means pretty much comfort is all the way around. Front center dash is a huge touchscreen system. This one divided into quadrants versus like the Uconnect that has more of a central screen with shortcuts down below. I like this one just because you get a multitude of different things going on. Now what I also prefer is simply to bring the entertainment up, really gives you a full size screen as you go down the road. Now if you do get lost, simply press here, it takes you back to where you begin. Now other features are found under the menus, that allows you really to look through all the variations that you can um, utilize. Also, Blue Link has been improved each year, getting even better for 2018. The touchscreen system can be an arm stretch away in some cases, so if you prefer, there are some old school shortcuts right here on the dash with nice symmetric knobs for volume and tune select. Now below that is the dual climate controls, really with temperature speed on the outside, fan controls in the middle, and all the mode selects filling up the rest of the buttons. Now what I also like is some other enhancements, specifically the cooling and heating down of the seats, both for the front driver and passenger, with each having three separate levels. For connectivity down below, you will find two power supplies and a USB connection and auxiliary jack, and well, just enough room for putting the devices. Between the front occupants, you will find dual cup holders, a nice little place for chains, the good old gear shifter that does have the manual-like mode, and some other functions, the electric parking brake, parking sensors, and the driving mode. Now the driving mode, there's three versions. You do have the uh, Sport, the Econo, and Comfort. Sport will give you a little bit more pep in your step, of course, but I pretty much left it in Comfort. Now if you do wanna watch the bottom dollar when it comes to Phillips, Econo mode might be your best choice. On the left side of the steering wheel is the shortcuts for your entertainment from volume to phone to mode selection. On the right, is the controls for cruise. Now, I like the fact that this one did come with adaptive cruise control. Simply set your spacing and the vehicle accommodates when you're in traffic. Now, as for gauge cluster, you will find a standard analog tack and speedometer, but a good old nice digital readout in between with a truly oversized readout for your speed. There are plenty of safety features on this vehicle, really right down to the backup sensors when you're backing up. That gives you that cross traffic awareness as well as blind spot awareness that really relates to your mirrors. Let you know if someone's there before you merge into the other lane. Climbing into the back, this is where you see those leg room numbers that I talked about in the front that are so plentiful. Ease into the back and give even better leg room numbers back here, especially if the occupants in the front are of modest height. These seats are naturally going to move forward, really giving a lot of breathing room back here for backseat drivers. Now, what I like is the overall comfort. A little bit of individualized attention here on the outer side, a little bit of sculpting, nice cushioning overall, and of course, we do have a nice elbow support here in the middle and a lot of vehicles are stepping it up in this case really giving you some ele elevated support versus the old school which sits down here on the cushion now lastly is airflow now what you're going to find is there's some nice airflow here on the center console is raised just a little bit and seems direct right here the occupants and one way to keep it nice and cool back here on a hot day are these shades pretty much pull them up both sides and it cools it down what i also prefer 
is one back there. Now it does for this edition of Road Warrior and a test drive behind the wheel of the 2018 Hyundai Sonata, a vehicle that's really been kind of morphed over the years to what you see here, a nice regal approach to the midsize sedan, easily standing up against the competition. Now what we see for this model year is just a few enhancements because after all, they've really gotten to a nice place when it comes to design, overall efficiency, and of course, interior volume. This vehicle truly delivers. So what they did is just add a few enhancements. Now, as always, like thank you for watching this edition of Road Warrior. Keep both hands on the wheel and eyes straight ahead.